Beloved, be greeted in the name of Jesus. Once again, thank you for being part of this Bible study. It really gives me honor and pleasure to be with you once again. Today, we are on our eighth session, and the theme is the significance of obedience. Shall we bow our heads and pray? Almighty God, in the name of Jesus, once again, we come in your presence, and we just want to thank you for your presence. We thank you for your guidance. We thank you, Almighty God, that every day you teach us what is right. And we are busy at this point in time, focusing on obedience, our foundation of faith. I pray that you be with us right now for your kingdom's sake. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Beloved, once again, welcome to our eighth session of our Bible study. It really gives me honor and pleasure to be standing here and interacting with you. And I believe thus far you understand what obedience is all about. Let me repeat, no one, no one whatsoever is forced to obey. But there are rewards in obedience. No one is forced to obey, but rewards are there for someone who obey. When you read Deuteronomy 28, verse 38, verse 13, reads, the Lord will make you the head, not the tail. If you pay attention to the commands of the Lord your God that I give you this day and carefully follow them, you will always be at the top, never at the bottom. This is an assurance that by being obedient, God has promised that we shall be the head, not the tail. But the problem is about selective obedience. Selective obedience is when we obey that with that which we think is right in terms of our own definitions. And we fail to adhere to the commands of God in totality. Last week, we focused on we experience the blessings of holy living through obedience. But today, our focus is on Jesus calls us to obey. Jesus is calling upon us to obey. In Jesus, we find the perfect model of obedience. Our motivation for obedience is love. You cannot obey if you don't love. Because love is a key in ensuring that at the end of the day, we become obedient. Jesus invites us to follow him like he did with the disciples. When he says, follow me, it's either you follow him or you choose not to follow. But if you follow him like the disciples did, when you read John 3, verse 16, it reads, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son so that whosoever believe, that is the condition, whosoever believe should not perish but have everlasting life. Again, you can see that deciding to follow or believe it's a matter of choice. You can choose not to believe. And at the end of the day, nothing will ever happen to you. But if you choose to obey, there is an assurance that we will have everlasting life. And Jesus in John 14, verse 15 says, If you love me, you will keep my commandments. And that is Jesus. He's saying if we love him then we will follow his commandments. Before we follow Jesus, we must reflect on some important considerations. Because you can't just, you must understand what is it that you're taking, what is it that you're doing by following him. So there are some few considerations that I want to share with you. Number one, you must be willing to obey and submit. You know, if you don't submit, 
you'll always have reservations on certain things. Like what Saul did, instead of destroying everything, he chose to reserve some few things. But when you are willing to obey and submit, you will then be in a, follow, in a position to follow Jesus in totality, together with his examples and instructions. When you read John 14 verse 23, Jesus says, Anyone who loves me will obey my teachings. My Father will love them. And we will come to them and make our home with them. This is a promise that when you obey the instructions of Jesus, together with the Father, they will come into your life and make residence in you. That is about being willing to obey and submit. Number two, be prepared to endure hardship. Sometimes we want things that are very easy. But obedience means you must be willing. Even though when the going gets tough, you must be willing to stand your ground. That's point number two. Be prepared to endure hardship. Following Jesus simply means hardship is not only possible, but it is guaranteed. You will definitely come across hardships. When you read James chapter 1, verse 12, explains, James explains the following. Blessed is the one who perseveres under trials because having stood the test, that person will receive the crown of life. That's so powerful. The crown of life that the Lord has promised to those who love him. You see, again, love becomes the most important key. If you obey, if you are able to stand the test of ground, the test of time, then the crown of life is assured to you. Then point number three, know that the world will not always accept you. And that is given. You must know that the world will never, um, will never accept you. Jesus in John 15 verse 8 says, If the world hates you, Keep it in mind that it hated me too. So Jesus is saying, I was hated. Now, if you follow my example and take my instructions, there is no way in which the world will love you because I was not loved by the world and the world hated me. We must actually cling to what Peter and the apostles acknowledged in Acts Chapter 5, verse 29. When Peter, together with the disciples, said, we must obey God rather than man. So it, up, it is up to us whether we obey God or man. Point number four, be willing to step outside your comfort zone. So, you know, the problem is one is because we have created so much comfort to ourselves as children of God. To get out of that comfort becomes so difficult. When Jesus was addressing the rich man in Matthew chapter 19, you know, in verse 26, he says, and when he looked at his disciples straight into their eyes, and he said, with man, this is impossible. But with God, all things are possible. Jesus Christ was saying, there are certain things, especially when you have to share that which you have with others. It is impossible. It's hard. But Jesus is assuring the disciples that what is impossible with man, with God, it is possible. And Paul again says, if we call up upon the Lord and we are dealing with our comfort zone, he says, God will help you achieve the goals for which the word of God has promised. When you read Philippians chapter 1, the 6th, Paul says, and I am certain that God who began the good work within you will continue his work until it is finally finalized on the day when Jesus Christ returned. Brethren, that is very, very critical. 
leaving our comfort zone and reaching out to those whom we thought that are not important to the Lord. Going out there and making your hands dirty, allowing God to talk to you, guide you and lead you. Point number five, expect to be humble. Expect to be humbled. Paul in Philippians chapter two, he talks about imitating Christ's humility. In verse three, he says, do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Rather, in humility, value others above yourself. In verse 4, by not looking to your own interest, but each of you to the interest of others. And in verse 5, he says, in your relationships with one another, have the same mindset like Christ. And in conclusion, which is point number six, prepare to laugh. Why is it important to laugh? It's because when you laugh, then you will obey. Without love, obedience is very difficult. When you read John 13, 34 to 35, reads, A new command I give you, and that is Jesus. A new command I give you. Love one another as I have loved you so that you must love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. Without love, we cannot obey. Loving one another is a key to ensure that the world must be able to see Christ in us by reaching out and loving one another. I just want to thank you. Consider these reflections. And be at the top, not at the bottom. Because there is an assurance that when we obey, we shall remain the head and not the tail shall be bowed. Almighty God, in the name of Jesus, thank you once again that you can talk to our lives. Thank you for your word that is sharper than the two-edged sword. Continue to minister to us, even on this day, that it's only through love that we can be in a position to obey. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. God loves you. I love you. And take care.